Thank you, Lord. My message this morning is a testimony. Because of God's grace and His goodness, I stand before you this morning. I stand humble, thankful. And I stand as a living blessing. All right, all right. For about five weeks I've been going through. I was going through. The last time I was here was Christmas Day. And I it took God to get me here. All right, all right. I had been having some problems and saw a doctor. I've been to several let me just give you a quick synopsis of what God has done for me and what I've been through in the last four weeks, four five. Had five doctor visits, five x-rays, two other x-rays with dye, contrast, five prescriptions, one emergency room visit, two operations, one stint and one miracle. Ha! All right. God is good. Hallelujah. While I was away, I wasn't alone. I talked to God. I had a lot of time to read and a lot of time to study and a whole lot of time to pray. Because when you're in pain, and I, I this wasn't a, it wasn't what most people would think as a life and death situation. I had a, a large kidney stone that I couldn't pass. And I don't know if you've ever had one. I wouldn't wish this on anybody. But uh, uh, at one point I remember thinking, Lord, I'm finna die, just take me on home. Because it, it was hurt. It was bad. And I went to the emergency room and they diagnosed what I had and went to a specialist and he said, I, you just can't do this. But just to make sure, we're going to see it give you another week. Yeah. And doing all the, the bleeding and whatever, I went back to see him about a week. He said, this ain't going to happen. We're going to have to do something about it. I'm went in and I'm going to go in and get it. After the surgery, he called and told my wife, I just couldn't get it. It must have rolled back in the kidney or something. I couldn't get it. We're going to leave this stand in and we're going to let him see if he can pass it on his own. Went to his office two days later and he showed it to me on the on x-ray and showed me the stone and showed me the stand. I'm like, that can't go do that. What is it? <laughs> Come on now. About five days later, he said, well, we're going to have to go in and get it. We're going to have to break it up and go in and get it. Pull the stand out and break it up and get the pieces that we can. And I was, I was, I was praying. I was, I was hurting. <laughs> Lord knows, I, I was going through. And about that time, I think it was that Sunday, I had surgery on that second operation on that Saturday, about Tuesday. And I was praying. I was studying out, and and it just hit me. And this is a battle you got to win. It ain't about you. And when I took my mind off that thing. And I put my mind on God. My wife can tell you that last two days before the surgery, I quit taking pain pills. I quit taking that stuff he gave me for nausea because I was all right. Oh, it was it was hard. But I, I, I could endure it because I knew that I was going to make it through. I knew that God would put anything on me that he would bring me through. And as I said, it's not a life and death situation. It felt like it. But I knew that if God brought me to it, right, he would right. take me through. Yeah. Yeah. And when I went in that operating room, uh, I, I don't I didn't talk to him after the operation. He called my wife and he told my wife this. This is what she told me. He said, he went in to get it, to break it up, but he couldn't find it. He couldn't find the stone. He said when he pulled that stint out, it must have came out with the stint. And I'm like, I saw the x-ray and I saw that stone. It ain't came out with that stint. Glory to God. 
And, 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 and I've got to go back and see him too, and I want him to tell me that. Because I can see, he's going to show me the x rays. He does that every time. He show me the x rays, and then he show me everything. And I, I want to show him that x ray of that, that stone. And that little skinny skin he got, stint he put in there. And then him to tell me that it came out with God performed a miracle on my soul. I am standing here to tell you that God will not bring you to any problem, any situation, any storm in your life that he won't take you through. Now see, our problem is we get to a fight. We get to a battle and we give up on God. All right. I remember reading back in that fifth chapter of Mark that talks about that, that, that ruler of the synagogue mm -hmm. and how his daughter was in trouble. Mm -hmm. Now this is a Jew who did not believe in Jesus. All right. But when, when, as they said, when the rubber meets the road, oh, no. when you get down to where you've lost everything that you got yeah. and you've got to call on Jesus, when you would, when put your statue, your religion, your denomination aside, and you go where you can get help, then you know you down to the point of death. Now, I wasn't down to the point of death that, I, that my, my physical mind thought I was, but let me tell you, my pain was at that point. Because every time they hit me, it felt like somebody was cutting me from here all the way down. But let me tell you, God took me. And he took the pain upon him to just as he died on Calvary for your sins and mine. He took away that which I could not bear. Let me tell you, there was a point in that five weeks when I didn't think I would. I couldn't stand up. I was in the bed and I'm not. And my wife would talk to me and she would all rub on my shoulder. I'm like, please don't. I, I, I just couldn't stand it. But you see, when I took my mind off what was I was going through and put my mind on Jesus. You see, we are going through some things today. We may not look like it on the outside, but some of us have smiles on our face, but our hearts are torn. Yeah. Some things are going on in our heart. Yeah. And some things are going on in our home, on our job. We are very neighbors yeah. that we have to go through. And we may have a smile on our face, but we've talked to God about it. And he's led you to this situation. And he said, I will lead you through it. See, I'm a, 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 a standing witness that God can, that he will. God wants to be your healer, your deliverer. God wants to be your savior. Hallelujah. See, we have an opportunity today to say, we're always talking about the things that are going on wrong in this world. Mm -hmm. about, about how bad things are. And things are getting bad out there sometimes. Don't get me wrong. But look, we are supposed to be the light of the world. And every time somebody see our light, they, it shines into the darkness. So when there's darkness, where's your light? Right. Where is your light? Right. What are you doing to change the situation? We cannot stay in these, I was about to say four walls, but a few more than four walls here, and think the world is going to change <coughs> by the word that we have here. The word that you receive here is for you to go out All right. and use it. When Jesus taught, he taught his disciples, he taught the people so that they could go out yeah. and use what they were taught. He told the disciples to go into the hedges and highways and bid them who will to come. Did you bid anybody to come during this week? Did you let your light shine to, in any dark corner during this week? You see, it's easy. It's easy to be a child of God, a Christian. It's easy to show my Christianity in these walls. But when I step out and Satan is on every hand trying to knock me down, throwing stumbling blocks in my way. I heard the teacher this morning in Sunday school said, do you put down your religion? Do you lay it down so you can say a few words and go back to pick it up? Come on. Let's be real about this thing. Some of us get to the point of death and we just get up. We get to a point where it's either keep going on this road or stop and turn your back. And we stop. I can take no more. I, I've had all I can take. 
And I was at that point. I, 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 I was there. But look, I realized, and this, this is the difference between a child of God and somebody that don't know. All right. All right. When I held these burdens as long as I can, I realized that they weren't mine to hold. All right. All right. He said, Lay your burdens and cast your burdens on him. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, our problem is we cast them on him, then we go back and pick them up. I'll take it. Come on. <laughs> cast your burdens on me. All right. Mm -hmm. Pick up your cross. See, each one of us has a cross to bear. And you know what my cross is? To love the Lord Jesus Christ with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind. And to love my neighbor. As myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's easy to love me. Because it's me. Oh, you know. I love me. But that person that don't love me. Oh, it's easy to love those that love us. All right. But that, 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 that curses you. And I heard you talking about that. And I stay out my son. I meant to tell you. There are those people that don't like you. Those people that hate you. Those people that cast those stones in your way. Yeah. You know you got to love them too. Do you know that when you love them, you show that light of Christ on them? All right, all right. Do you know that when you love them, then one of these days they're going to come back and they're going to want to know what it is that makes you love your enemy? What it is that won't let you hold your peace? What it is that won't let you act like everybody else? See, there's a difference between light and dark. There's a difference between right and wrong. And there's a difference between saved and unsaved. We want the world to be saved. Mm -hmm. We want the world to do right. We want the world to be right. We want the world to be the truth. We don't want the world to lie. We don't want the world to hurt us. But it's the world. It's the world. Satan is loose. He's loose in the world. Mark 6 chapter 53 verse. Down to the 56 verse it says, And when they passed over, they came unto a land of Gentile and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship, straight away they knew him, and ran through the whole region round about, and began to carry about in beds those that were sick. <laughs> Where they could, he was. And whithersoever he entered into a village or city, the country, they laid their sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch, if it were, the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. And as many as touched him were made whole. I've been through a lot in the last five weeks. But I gained so much more. I suffered. But I came out on the other side. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God healed my body. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I, I'm not through. They told me as I was leaving that I, I've got two more in there that got to come out. But just as God removed one, All right. whatever he wants me to do. You see, if, if, if he needs me, if he needs somebody, if he needs somebody to have to go through, why not me? But if he want to just take these out, <laughs> it's all right with me. But you see, whatever God wants me to do, if he wants me to go through some more pain, I'll go through it with him. Hallelujah. If he needs me to be another witness of his miracle, then I'll say, hallelujah, God has healed me again. Hallelujah. But no matter what happens, I'll stand on the word of God. I'll stand and say that God is my Savior. He's my help. He's my all in all. And that without him, I am nothing. I have been nothing and I will be nothing but with God, with Jesus Christ on my side. You see, I, 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 I felt so alone in a room full of friends with a room full of family. I've been alone. 
but when I found Jesus. And every time I remember, you see, sometimes we're, we're, we're only human. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we forget whose we are and who has already paid the price. Right. By his stripes, I'm healed. And I can claim my healing no matter what part of the situation. I can be being <laughs> the first pain of going through. And yet, I know that I'm healed already because of his strength. I accept what he's offering. And by accepting his healing, I accept my role in this ministry. And that every time I have an opportunity, I'll tell of the goodness of Jesus. I will stand on the promises. I will spend my time in company with Jesus. I will read. I will study. I will discuss. I will have a relationship with my God. Through sickness and health. Through storm and rain. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Because there is no limits to what God can do.